All right, let's generate the random numbers. So I'll just create ran here, and this will be land the center. So I'll just generate random numbers using the ran function. So this will return a value between zero to one, okay, which represents the cumulative probability of the distribution. Okay, and I'll generate the same thing for the pretext operating margin, okay, for the uniform distribution. Okay, so every time you press F9, okay, the a new set of random numbers will be generated. So of course, uh, before I move forward, I'll just like to explain what these numbers actually mean in the context of a normal and a uniform distribution. So let me just copy and paste that as value. Okay, so of course the final numbers here will look a bit different. Okay, so uh, these numbers here represents cumulative probability. So I'm just for the normal distribution, okay, this 0 0.15933 here represents the cumulative probability of a standard normal variable, Z, okay, where the center is represented by the mean of 0. So 0 0.15933 will be somewhere on the left hand side because we know that the mean divides the uh, bell, the, uh, the curve into 50 50. So 0 0.15933 will be on this side. Okay, so this is 0 0.15933. So we'll like to find the value of Z here, which is a negative value. And from there, we will uh, equate Z to X minus the mean over the standard deviation. Okay, and the mean is 44 million. The standard deviation is 10. From there, we can work out what is X here, which is in this case the revenue. So X would be the mean plus uh, the Z value times the standard deviation. Okay, so that's how we're going to work it out. So for this case, uh, the Z value uh, would be, we can use the norm.s.inv and we'll just select this probability here. Okay, and that will be negative 0 0.99723. Okay, so that will be the Z value in this case. All right, and uh, from there, we'll work out what the value of X is, which is, in this case is the revenue. So that will be the mean. Okay, we'll just select the mean here plus the standard deviation multiplied by the z value okay so that's 30 uh, so based on this random number the revenue will be 34.03 million dollars now move uh, moving on to the pretext operating margin it's based it follows a uniform distribution so for a uniform distribution it only requires the minimum and the maximum value so the minimum value here is six percent and the maximum value is 12 percent and the probability here 0 0.08524 okay it's between six percent to a value x okay which we need to uh, work out so this will be 0 0.08524 okay there's about 8.524 percent so the probability here 0 0.08524 is equals to x minus six percent over the range of 12 minus six so x here will be equals to the minimum plus the cumulative probability multiplied by the range. Okay, so that's how we're going to work out the pretax operating margin. So I'll just key in the formula here. I'll just take the minimum plus the cumulative probability multiplied by the range. Okay, maximum minus minimum. So that will be the pretax operating margin based on this uh, random number. Okay, let me just change that to four decimal places. Now that there are no other variables to simulate, I will now change these uh, two numbers back to the random number function. So I'll just press equals to ran. Okay, and this equals to ran. All right, so now uh, the values will keep changing as we update or recalculate uh, the cells. All right, so now I'm going to calculate the base here after tax cash flow again. So that'll be equals to the revenue. Okay, multiply by the pre-tax operating margin minus the non-operating expenses. Then we multiply by one minus the tax rate. Okay, then we have our base here after tax cash flow, which will change when I press F9, which is to recalculate. Okay, and then uh, we're going to simulate the same thing. I'm just going to copy this here. Okay, so let's make sure that the formulas are copied correctly. So here, this is uh, we're going to move this over to this new one. Okay, so this is the one based on the simulated values. Okay, and then uh, the growth rate is still 5% and the 
year okay is based on the numbers indicated here all right so let's copy that down okay and just do a quick check make sure the numbers are copied correctly okay and lastly we'll calc I will check the value okay so it's based it should be based on 10% uh, okay and then these are the cash flows okay so let's our simulated value okay so every time I press F9 the value of the store will keep changing okay but of course it's just a single number what we need to generate now is a probability distribution that contains okay a, a number of uh, these values okay I'm going to run 10,000 uh, simulations okay based on this result so of course let's uh, clear some space here so I'm just going to select this okay and it's going to delete that all right so i'm going to use the space here to generate the simulation so let's say i'm going to uh, let's set this equals to the final result which is the store value okay and then here i will just uh, create a label for the simulation runs i'll start from the number one two and all the way up to ten thousand to make it quick i'll just uh, use the fill function under series Okay, and then uh, this is a series in columns. Uh, step value is one, and stop value is uh, ten thousand. Okay, so that will go all the way down to ten thousand. Right then, uh, we will need to highlight all these values. Okay, all the way down to ten thousand, and then click on data, and then under what if analysis, we'll select data table, and then the column input cell can be any uh, empty cells around here. So maybe I will select, uh, let's say, maybe G1. Okay, make sure it's an empty cell and then click OK. So for each cell here, it will generate a, a, a value that is random, of course, okay, based on this output, okay, which is the simulated store value. Okay, so these are the store values for each simulation run. So of course, if you want, you can run more than 10,000 simulations, okay? So the more simulations you have, the higher the statistical accuracy. Right, so uh, in this case, um, uh, to make it easier for me to refer to these 10,000 uh, values, I'm going to highlight okay, all these values here, and I'm going to give it a name. So I'll just call it uh, SIM, SIM, okay, so for the simulation list, and press Enter. So now whenever I type SIM, it will refer to this list. Okay, we can generate um, descriptive statistics okay, from this uh, result so let's say for example I can do a count okay uh, I can calculate the mean or the standard deviation or skewness or ketosis okay and uh, we have minimum and maximum so for count uh, we can use the count function okay for sim so it's very easy for us to refer to it if you name the range so we have 10,000 counts which is correct and then for F mean, we use the average function. And again, I call sim here. That's uh, 11.4846. That's the average for this list. And then the standard deviation, I will use uh, the sample formula. Okay, and then sim here. For skewness, okay, I'll use the formula for the sample as well. So we, we see a positive skewness here, which indicates that the distribution is skewed to the right. And then uh, ketosis, uh, I'll use the cut function. Okay, and then I'll call sim here. Now, of course, I'll take note that this is excess ketosis, which means that uh, the formula uh, returns the ketosis minus 3. So if you get a negative figure, that means the distribution is platyketic. Okay, if you get a positive number, for example, that means it's a, a leptoketic or fat tails. If you get 0, that means it's uh, normally distributed. Then for the minimum value, uh, we have this case negative 4.88 and then maximum we have uh, about 36.26 okay so that's the range here now of course we may want to find out uh, certain things like uh, what is the probability that the store value will be negative which means less than zero so I can do something like okay what's the probability that the store value is less than zero so all we need to do is just uh, we just use we need to count okay out of these 1000 values how many of them are less than zero Okay, or even equals to zero if you are concerned about um, whether the store value will be zero. But let's say we are now just concerned whether it's going to be, let's say, negative. So I'll just count, okay, I'll just do a count if uh, this range here, which is sim, okay, and then, uh, then open, make sure it's open quotation here. So this is less than zero, 
and that will be about 71. Uh, this is just a count, not a probability. So if you want a probability, we have to divide by the count, which is a total. So that's uh, 10,000. So in percentage, uh, this is about 0.41%. Okay, there's a 0.41% probability that the store value will be negative. Okay, so how, concern is, how concerning is this number? Okay, is it within the management's uh, risk tolerance? Okay, or we may want to know certain things like, okay, let's say the store requires an uh, initial investment of uh, $5 million. So in this case, uh, we will want to make sure that the store value will be $5 million or above, okay, in order to cover the initial investment. So let's say what's the probability that the store value will be greater than or equals to $5 million? So again, we'll do a count here, but I'll just copy the formula, okay. Just copy the formula here, okay, and then I will just change the condition here to be greater than or equal to 5 okay so that will give us around uh, 89 percent okay or 88.72 percent okay then we, we the management will have to see whether this is within their uh, acceptance criterion or do they need this to be higher okay so graphically we can also uh, represent these figures in the form of a histogram so there are a lot of ways to do it, okay, but I'll just uh, use the easiest one, which is from the insert tab. Just choose the histogram chart, okay. So on this end here, let me just move to the right, okay. So let's say here we have the chart title, I'll right click and select data, uh, add, and then series value, we'll just select this range here, okay, which is sim, and then click OK, All right. So we have the chart title, so I'll just rename the chart here, the chart title to histogram of uh, value of store, okay. And then, uh, okay, we see that the the beans here are of course defined in numbers that may not be easy to, or may not be user friendly. So the vertical axis then shows the frequency or the number of occurrences. And you can see that from this distribution that the the distribution of the values is skewed to the right. So now what we can do is uh, when you click on this axis, okay, you can click on format axis if it doesn't show this uh, menu, okay. But from here we can see that uh, you can actually set the bin width or the number of bins. I can, for example, set uh, maybe 20 bins, okay, then you have 20 uh, categories here. Again, uh, the bins here doesn't look so nice, so you may want to set the underflow and the overflow bin. So what it means is that if I set the overflow bin like uh, 30, then immediately on the extreme right, you will see that anything greater than 30 will be categorized under this last bin, okay? And for the underflow bin, I can set something like negative three. Then for anything less than negative three or equals to negative three, it will be categorized under this bin, okay? So then you can set the bin width. If you want something that is round number, I can change this to one. Okay, and then immediately you can see a very uh, nice number here. Okay, from negative three to negative two, negative two to negative one, and so on and so forth. All right, of course we can set things like, I can change this to three, the bin width to three if I want to, then we'll have lesser bins. Okay, and it all depends on how, uh, what tough, uh, how tough information you want to find from it. Okay, the more bins you have, of course, the clearer the picture, but there may be a lot of noises in it. Okay, but if you have too little bins, then there's not much pattern that we can observe. Right, so I'll just change this back to one. Okay, and then if you want to show the frequency, you can just right click and click add data labels. Okay, then you can see the frequency for each bar here. Okay. And let's say, for example, if you want to know what, how many, uh, how many of these values are actually equals to or below zero, then I can change this to let's say zero. Then you see that there are fifty nine cases where the value of the store can be less than or equals to zero. Okay, there's about fifty nine over one ten thousand uh, occurrences. All right, so that's uh, that's how we can use a histogram here. So that will be the end of the video. So you can use the histogram to actually assess the risk okay of a certain problem okay as long as uh, you define the variables which which uh, affect the output and then uh, for those variables okay as we have seen before some variables actually are fixed in nature while some variables may be uncertain and it follows a probability distribution 
So of course, uh, to know what type of probability distribution to use, sometimes we, uh, we will base it on the historical pattern, okay, whether it's true time series or true cross-sectional patterns, or in the case where if there are no patterns for us to refer to at all, okay, we can take a best guesstimate, okay, to assume all these distributions. So the normal and uniform distributions are not the only ones that you can use. There's a, there's a lot of distributions that can actually be applied. Okay, but of course, uh, garbage in, garbage out. If you if the quality of your inputs or your assumptions are poor, then your output will also not be reliable. Right, so that's the end of this video.